The 2016 election was a turning point in American politics. It exposed an even wider political divide than political analysts originally thought. Traditionally purple states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin went red, leading to Trump winning the election. According to Pew Research, the divide between Democrats and Republicans reached record highs during Obama's second term. As of 2017, one year into Trump's presidency, Pew reported the gap grew even larger. Fast forward to 2018, we're more polarized than ever. College campuses mirror what's happening in the larger society. Students at the college at Brockport are talking about how their views have changed and why they're choosing to become more politically involved. Sarah Anzalone is one of those students. So I definitely feel like the election made me feel like I could do something more for people because I know who I wanted to win. And uh, I feel like a lot of people also wanted someone else to win. And I feel like there are just people who needed to speak up about stuff. And that made me interested in getting involved. Anzalone is one of many students who became politically active during the 2016 election. She was so interested that she changed her major to political science after the election. Looking back on her classes in 2016 compared to now, she says there's a significant difference in how people interact. So, you know, a teacher will give an opinion, and luckily they're all very good at being very nonpartisan in class, which I love. Um, but, you know, a teacher will say something and ask for opinions, and people seem much more comfortable now in this past few months, I feel like, speaking about their beliefs than they did, you know, right after the 2016 election. I feel like people were a little more scared, but it's become much more of an open discussion now. John Broida is one of these students who's comfortable sharing his opinions. He identifies as an independent and sees flaws on both sides of the aisle. So I don't find myself loyal to any of the party platforms. Um, I'm not a fan of everything the Democrats have to say. And I'm Definitely not a fan of majority of what the Republicans have to say. Broida may not like what everyone has to say, but he's willing to listen. He hasn't always cared about politics. His views have evolved over the past few years. 2016 was the first year where I really, really invested the time. To me, it felt like the first time where there was something outside the ordinary happening um, as far as the elections were concerned, because people were getting People who were getting the airtime, you had people like Trump, um, even Bernie was getting a little bit more recognition. It wasn't just the mainstream Republican candidates or the mainstream Democratic candidates. You had these other people that were all of a sudden coming out. And um, it really felt like it was an important moment. These important moments in 2016 were what it took for Broida and other young people to make their way to the polls. For the first time, there's a candidate that truly spoke to things that I believed in. And then there's also a candidate that completely contradicted everything I believed in, in the wrong ways. So I felt like it was important to be active and participate in any way I could. And I've not missed a vote since. And I plan on never to miss a vote since then, because I think it's the most important thing we can do as citizens of this country in a lot of ways. Broida isn't typical of a college-age voter. According to census.gov, 46.1% of 18 to 29 year olds voted in the 2016 election, even after so many young people were energized by Bernie Sanders' primary campaign. By comparison, 58.7% of 30 to 44 year olds voted, 66.6% .6 of 45 to 64 year olds voted, and 70.9% of 65 plus year olds voted. Jack Merritt is another atypical college age voter. I'm in the Republican Party. I'm a card-carrying Republican <laughs> since I was 15. That means you have to donate over $60, <laughs> you know, to get a card that says your name on it. Merritt is more than just an active Republican. He's also working on congressional candidate Dr. Jim Maxwell's campaign. He's also chair of the Monroe County Young Republicans. Merritt loves his jobs, but being a member of the Grand Old Party on such a liberal campus has its share of challenges. I've had uh, dates leave me when they found out I'm Republican. <laughs> it wasn't anything serious, but, uh, you know, it's definitely, it's a stigma. And, you know, when I say I'm a Republican, the first thing I would assume that all of you would think, oh, he loves Trump. <laughs> or, oh, he wants to build a wall or, you know, any of those common rhetoric Republican terms. Merritt isn't one of those Republicans. He describes himself as fiscally conservative but socially progressive. 
Despite this, Merritt was excited when the first Republican president he voted for was elected in 2016. He was shocked by the reaction people had to Trump's election. I remember how excited I was. I'm like, oh my God, you know, my first Republican president that I voted for. And then I come to school the next day and there's safe zones and people are crying. And I'm like, it's just four years. You know, the president can only do so much. Why, why is it like a nuclear bomb just went off in San Francisco? <laughs> and it's changed in more ways than one. Voter registration on campus has increased significantly over the past few years. Associate Director of Community Development, Kim Pyatt, works to get students on campus registered to vote and become more politically engaged. If you look at the 2014 midterm elections, we really didn't have a great uh, interest by our students. Um, our, response, or our voting rate for that year was 14 percent. Um, so really, if you're thinking about that is such a huge majority of students on Brockport's campus not interested at all. So we, in the past couple of weeks, have registered over 700 people um, to vote who were, who were changing their voter registration status or newly registered to vote. So um, that's really exciting for us, particularly in a non-presidential year, to give a little bit of context. In the year that we had the presidential election, fall 2016, we um, registered just over a thousand. Predominantly, students are either saying, yes, I'm already registered, or no, please let me fill out a voter registration form. Although Pyatt has noticed a lot more students are interested in voting, not everybody feels this way. A lot of students still really feel like their vote doesn't matter. This year we haven't had as many people just kind of outright shut it down, um, but we have had more people who I think are a little bit dissatisfied with our electoral process. And so I have had people um, that have said things like, no, and I don't really want to register to vote because I don't think that it's a fair process or I don't think that my vote really matters. That's the one you often hear. Pyatt credits the 2016 election for people's lack of faith in the electoral process. I do think that we see kind of the, the remnants of the 2016 election where the popular vote was won by one candidate and the electoral vote was won by another. And so I do think people get to a point where they feel frustrated with a system um, but don't necessarily know what to do about that and so they just dis they, they tap out. There are a lot of explanations for students choosing to tap out of voting. Broida thinks it goes deeper than just one election. I really believe that there should be multiple parties, not just two. There's no way that two parties could accurately represent the entire population. We are backwards in a lot of ways, and we like to not think of ourselves as that, but when it comes to the other advanced, more advanced uh, economies and countries in the world, we do things that are pretty old school, and we need a multi-party system, because, I mean, this country has been divided into two since the Civil War, really. Like, even, you could argue before that, but it, we've just maintained this binary existence politically and like socially and it just it, it breeds the environment we're in right now with Trump. Broida is one of many Americans who sees a divide. No matter their views, many people are concerned about the state of our country. To see kids screaming at each other and, and, and fist fights over it just it's not the America I remember. You know, that reminds me back to 1968, which was a long time ago, way before my time, <laughs> where you had riots in the streets and you had fist fights and you had the National Guards on college campuses. And that's not something I want to see in 2018, 19, or for the next 50 years. So what can we do as engaged citizens to prevent history from repeating itself? Broida, Anzalone, and Merritt all agree. The best approach is civil conversation. I try and find things I can connect with people I disagree with. So I have a close friend of mine who is serving in Afghanistan right now in the Army. And I sent him a care package. Um, I, I stay in touch with him through Facebook because we disagree on a lot. But I feel like it's extremely important that he has a conversation or he feels that he can talk to me about things he knows I disagree with openly. And I won't like react in a negative aggressive way towards him. You know, coming in freshman year, I had several friends who I guess felt very differently than I did and I didn't, you know, realize until after I became more involved and we kind of, you know, again facilitated those discussions. And it's not that necessarily I don't want to be with someone because, you know, they don't have the same ideas as me. You know, everyone's going to have different ideas. But I guess it's a matter of looking at people's character and their morals. And 
that help me to better judge the people I want to be around. I love people that are intellectual with their opinions, but whether Republican or Democrat, and I love to talk to those people and explain my side of it. These discussions are happening more among college students. I feel it's important to keep dialogue open between the people who are the same age, because eventually we're going to be the ones who are going to be in the spot of the baby boomers. We're going to be uh, holding the political offices more and more, and it's going to be up to us to really create the future for the next generation. So if we're going to start off in this really divided way, it, it doesn't give me hope for the future. Broida and Anzalone hope to see all their fellow classmates at the polls in November. I don't like going to the voting booth and being the only person under 60 who's standing in line waiting to vote. Uh, it drives me crazy. I wish more kids would just, even if they don't want to pay attention to all the political drama that happens, I wish more and more um, younger people would go out and just practice their right to vote because it's extremely important. I'm not going out there and telling just the Democrats to get involved. When people register, I want them to register to vote because it's their voice. And we need people, you know, in positions who are going to represent the people that they're representing, you know, not just one party. So I feel like when it comes down to it, no matter who you are and no matter what you believe, you just got to get your opinion out there. You got to be heard and you got to make a difference somehow. So that's my closing remark. <laughs> Only time will tell whether or not we can heal the political wounds that divide us. I'm Kayla Green.